Welcome back to Black Star Dove. Welcome back to my channel. And today's topic of discussion would be, I just wanna make sure I say his name right, the Darius Morris situation and situations like this that have happened. Um, also, we discussed the previous situation of Chad Wheeler. Um, for those who don't know who Darius Morris, Dar <laughs> Darius Morris was, um, he was a former NBA player who recently it came out that he was beating his girlfriend and there's a video online the video doesn't show him hitting her but it show like you can hear everything that's going on so that's open to interpretation of course because that it's not it's not actually proving that he quote unquote did anything but you know we know um and of course the chad wheeler situation was when um, he almost beat his girlfriend to death and was actually surprised that she was still alive. Like when she woke up, he was like, oh, you're still alive. And he was an NFL player. He used to play for the Seahawks. Um, just like domestic violence in general. Like the reason why I say these two people, because people want to say that it is a black issue. And yes, I am, my channel is more geared towards African-Americans, but the reason why I chose the two people is that A, the Darius Morris situation is quite new, but he's black, but Chad Wheeler, he's white. So, and then for some context, the girlfriends were, were also the opposite races. Like Darius was black, his girlfriend was white. Chad was white, his girlfriend was black. Um, I'm sorry, that was his wife at the time. His wife was black. Um, but, and then, and then I got to thinking, because I was having a conversation with my friend. And we was like, what do you expect when a whole lot of these athletes, their whole, pretty much they go their whole lives thinking that they can do whatever they want and know that they have no repercussions. Like I, I seen it, like I didn't, of course I didn't experience it, but I have friends who were, you know, cuddled and, you know, pretty much told that they can do whatever they want. Um, it was just, like I don't want to, I don't want to blame it on that, but we see this a whole lot of times. Like, especially with, with with that ego. Like when you get like that kind of money at that young of age, think about it. A whole lot of these guys are 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and they got millions of dollars. Um, even for an NFL player who don't make millions of dollars, they're making a good six figures. They're making like four hundred thousand easily. So, you know, take that for what you will. But for the NBA players and all that stuff, that's like, you know, you're you're this young, you've been pretty much had your ass kissed, kissed your whole entire life, you've been built up to this position where you're all knowing and all, and all powerful. The only thing that can really stop you is your limitations of your particular sport, where you may have dominated in like you know in elementary school, maybe even in high school. But when you get to college or even get to the pros, it's a reality check. You're not as good as you thought you were. You find yourself being like a role player or a bench player. That's like the only reality check that you would seem to get. Um, and besides the, the pay disparities, like, you know, someone on, on the bench may, 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 sorry, someone on the bench might make a million or two a year versus someone like LeBron James who's making like 35 million a year. So, you know, give or take. Um, but it's just like, man, it's, it's, it's always happened. Um, I'm willing to bet it even happened more in the past. It's just that now we have all this technology and stuff like that. Like even the Ray Rice situation, if you remember that, um, it's just, it's very horrible. Um, it's just so like, and then I see people are, t are attacking the women in this case, like, you know, there's a few people who, who attack Chad and there's a few people who are attacking um, Darius, Darius. I'm gonna say Darius, because it's spelled like Darius. Um, but it's like, most of the people are really coming at the women saying that they were in the wrong and all that stuff. And I'm looking at the people and it's not just black people, it's like black, white, all types of different races. And I'm just like, what is this mentality coming from? And then I'm looking at some of the pictures and they look kind of young. And then, you know, for black people, it's kind of hard to tell how old someone really is. But I don't know, it's just like, domestic violence isn't cool. 
but to show that I'm not above anyone else, I'm gonna bring up my own domestic violence situation that happened a long time ago. Um, I have never put my hands on a woman, um, but or I just tell the story of what happened. Um, so this is what my first fiance, I had two fiances, uh, one when I was extremely young, like 21 years old, this is her, and then one from a few years ago for two different situations. So I was like 21 years old and she was 29. Um, and our domestic violence thing was like, we had a real toxic relationship. It was like, it was it, it was struggle love. Like th that's what it was. Cause I was 21, she was 29. And we both wanted two different things. She wanted a husband, she wanted kids, she wanted all that stuff. And now that I'm older, I understand that because hey, she's 29 years old. That's what, that's what, she, that's what she was looking for. And I was only 21 and I was still in college. <laughs> and so, and what happened was, um, she she came she came to my house um well she came to my mother's house obviously and we was in the basement and we had a fight like like, like i said i never hit her i never put my hands on her but I, but I restrained her and it was like super weird because like i wouldn't let her go nowhere but like she beat me up like <laughs> where everything was, was said and done i was the one who was all bloodied and battered all she had was like two bruises on her arm for me holding her <laughs> but um what ended up happening was that I wouldn't let her leave. So technically I kidnapped her. Um, and then we ended up ordering, I believe it was Papa John's. And when the pizza man came, she, she went to the door screaming for help and all that stuff. And then I'm trying to pull her back. And the pizza man ended up calling the cops. Um, and then the cops came. Um, of course, they put me in the back of the car. Uh, they spoke to her. Uh, I don't know what she said but they came and got me out the back of the car and said I was free. Cause like, even, 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 if, even if you look at it, like I was the one who was like physically beat up and everything. Cause I was trying to restrain her <laughs> and she was like scratching at me and all that stuff. And it was just like so toxic, very, very toxic. Um, and I'm ashamed of myself for participating in that. Um, but yeah, like what happened was that she ended up leaving with the cops. Um, but she ended up calling me later on that night to come back the next day. So, I don't know, it looks like there's a dark spot right here. But it's not, I know it's like a shadow. Whatever. Um, not that, but that was just, like, I always thought that that was, that what was love in that situation. Like, you know, like, I love her, she loves me, let's have this huge struggle and all that stuff. And then I was 21, so I really wasn't, mature enough to understand but that still isn't an excuse for my behavior um but i'm just saying like i can i can relate to that because i'm looking at these these individuals and they're like in their 20s like early 20s and all that stuff and they have money so and they even have this this guy complex thinking that no one can really fuck with them um so i can see how things get out of hand um i just wish like besides the financial literacy classes that these leagues are not offering they offer like you know, classes like domestic disputes and domestic violence and how to like maintain yourself. Um, because you would think in your mind that them growing up, all this stuff, they knew that they couldn't fuck up their opportunity. But, but once they quote unquote get like that first check, that first big check, they just like all that just like goes out the window. So it's, a very, it's very sad what happened to that woman. And from all reports, I think like everything is gonna be settled out of court or something like that. So um, I guess he's, I guess he's gonna pay her off or whatever. But man, that sucks, man. And that sucks for him because A, you put your hands on a woman like that. So no matter what, you're, you have that label on you. And I hope that he can like learn from this and do better. I hope that woman can recover from this. Uh, most definitely, I don't know if she'll need some type of like trauma counseling um, psychologist or something like that but I really hope that she can recover and I hope um, for Chad Willer his wife can recover because her husband literally said oh wow you're still alive like he literally thought that she was dead um, that shit is just crazy that's crazy to me um, damn like I know there's not nothing that I can really do on this one except for just like continue to hold myself accountable and hold those around me accountable. But I really hope someone's holding these men accountable because just because you have money 
and you might have you might have a few yes men around you, you still need that one person to say, hey, you're fucking up, or you have fucked up, and you fucked up in a major way. Not just, I fucked up for the cameras. Like, you fucked up and get your life together. Um, other than that, take care. I love you. Peace.